Today in our I Survive series, we're focusing on migration. In many cases, people surviving persecution to immigrate or migrate to the U.S. and other countries. And to understand where we are now, we need to understand where we came from. That is why this gentleman is joining us today. Cesar Garcia Hernandez is an associate law professor, University of Denver, special, specializing in immigration. Thank you for coming in. It's my pleasure. Appreciate it. So we've been talking about this all morning. It is said that we are a nation of immigrants, but the country only began regulating immigration uh, a while back, right? Right. We really didn't start to regulate immigration in any concerted fashion until the late 19th century when we had a lot of Chinese folks who were coming here primarily to work in the railroads, building the railroads across the continent. And at some point, the backlash began, and that's when Congress got into the business of trying to limit the number of folks who could come to the United States. Can you explain the quota system? Because that impacts a lot of people, and sometimes depending on countries as well. Right. So for many, many decades, the uh, United States had a very rigid system of quotas, but where, where wherein uh, folks, uh, only a certain number of people from a particular country could come into the United States lawfully, and that was um, uh, favoring countries from Northern and Western Europe, and the idea was to uh, continue bringing in uh, people from white countries and limit uh, southern and eastern European countries, um, but importantly, um, exempted all of the Western Hemisphere, including Latin America, including uh, Mexican migration, which meant that there uh, was uh, basically impossible to migrate illegally from places like Latin America up until um, 1965. Yeah, so that has changed. You know, the, the, the big thing today, of course, is the uh, southern border immigration and all these people coming up in these caravans. We've been talking about that this morning. I think a lot of people really don't st understand a, why they're coming, and B, how seeking asylum works mm -hmm. in this country. Right, so the, the U.S. law is very, very clear on this, Gary, that um, anyone who is present, physically present in the United States has the right to request asylum. Now, they might be denied, they might win, but they have the right to be asylum, and the law is really quite explicit that it does not matter how you got here. You may be here with the government's permission, or you might be here without the government's permission, but you get to make that claim, and then it's up to the government to decide whether, you're, whether the, it's willing to grant you asylum or not. And then there was this shift about between the Obama administration and the Trump administration of who was a priority for ICE to actually look after. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so the Obama administration shifted gears over the course of, of President Obama's eight years, in which eventually um, the second term really started to, to, to fine tune its uh, enforcement priorities to t go after, spend its, its limited resources on um, certain people who the Obama administration thought were particularly um, uh, dangerous or uh, folks who it, it did not want in the United States and it tended to focus on people who had recently arrived in the U.S. or people who had certain criminal histories. Mm -hmm. um, the Trump administration has broadened that the enforcement prioritization to include just about anyone who is potentially uh, removable from the United States. I think most people agree, no matter what side of the aisle you sit on, that the immigration laws in this country are kind of a mess right now. Uh, the courts are backed up. All these mm -hmm. people are coming in. There's, you know, talk of the border wall and keeping people out. So what's it going to take, from your opinion, to... to to make this something that makes sense. Yeah, well, the reality is that there are fewer people coming into the United States from uh, traditional source countries like, like Mexico. Um, and so I think one is we have to uh, take a step back and look at what is actually happening. Folks don't want to come to the United States without the federal government's permission. They want to come to the United States with the government's permission um, and are, are, are coming often to make a living or to reunite with family that is already here. And so we value families and we value the, the labor that immigrants um, contribute to our economy and our way of life. Um, then we need to expand the number of folks who are um, allowed to come to the United States lawfully and safely. Right. We'll see if it happens. Professor, thank you as always for coming in. Appreciate it. Was a, it. it was a joy to be here, Gary. Yep.